For decades, scientists, activists, and even some politicians have been warning about climate change. The warnings have become more urgent as the effects of global warming hit closer to home. Recently, the Gulf of Maine Research Institute announced that last fall, waters off the coast of Maine spiked to record high temperatures. 207's Beth McAvoy sat down with one of the scientists tracking that warming trend. Anyone who enjoyed the ocean last fall may have noticed the water felt unseasonably warm. That's because it was. Between September and November of last year, waters in the Gulf of Maine, which lies between Cape Cod and Nova Scotia and extend many miles out into the open ocean, were the warmest ever recorded. How much warmer are we talking about? We're talking upwards of five or six degrees Fahrenheit on any given day sometimes. Uh, but on balance, that season was about four degrees, uh, almost five degrees warmer than average. Dave Reed Miller is the director of the Climate Center at the Gulf of Maine Research Institute, where they've been tracking sea surface temperatures for over a decade. In 2010, scientists really started to notice the warming trend increasing. Each season, each year, you know, it's, it's no longer that surprising when we're breaking record after record. And I think one thing we have to keep in mind is that while it may be the warmest one we've experienced to date, it may very well be the coolest one we'll experience for years to come. A blunt reality that is part of a larger global trend. Every year you're going to see variability, both globally and right here in the Gulf of Maine. But when you look over a multi-decadal time scale, so tens, 20, 30, 40, 100 years, you, the, it's undeniable what you're seeing. And we're seeing, uh, in many cases, an acceleration of that warming as well. What's causing the acceleration? It's primarily emissions of greenhouse gases. And while there is a global trend, the Gulf of Maine is taking the lead. The water off the coast of Maine is warming faster than 96% of the world's oceans. A big factor is simply the geography of the Gulf of Maine. It's, you know, by definition a gulf, so kind of closed off in a lot of ways. And it's relatively shallow relative to the rest of the ocean. Like a kind of a saucer of water on a, on a hot driveway or something. That'll heat up a lot faster than, say, a deep pool. When it comes to what's actually happening in the Gulf of Maine, you can think about it as sort of a, a bathtub that has a cold faucet and a hot faucet. And the Labrador current, which is coming down from the Arctic, is kind of the cold water faucet. And the Gulf Stream, which is bringing up that hot water from the tropical area, is kind of the hot faucet. And what's happening with climate change is that we're turning down that cold faucet and turning up that hot faucet. And so the influence of the Gulf Stream, the influence of that warm water, is increasing right here in the Gulf of Maine. Warming water means changes to the ecosystems that live there, which have an effect on Maine fisheries. There's a number of things that happen when we warm up the marine environment. First and foremost, the sea level rises, right? When you warm up water, it expands. And as a result, we're seeing you know, greater uh, frequency of coastal flooding all along the shore here. Uh, and we're also starting to see implications on, on ecosystems, a lot of changes that can, that can happen. And there's a lot of complexities involved in that, um, whether that means that uh, it affects the, the, the bottom of the trophic level, the, the plankton, or the very top, uh, you know, the behavior of marine mammals and other things. In the past year, the Gulf of Maine Research Institute received sightings of animals usually in much warmer water, such as blue crabs, black sea bass, and a smooth hammerhead shark. People are seeing this as kind of the canary in the coal mine, for lack of a better phrase, that we're seeing that the warming that is happening here in the Gulf of Maine is kind of a harbinger of things to come for other marine environments around the, not only the nation, but also the world. Even though the numbers may look bleak, Reed Miller says there are things that can be done to make a difference. The state of Maine has been really good about trying to incentivize certain behavior changes that would not only be a net benefit for climate change, but also could be cost effective for families, right? And so thinking about installing heat pumps to um, you know, minimize your own uh, residential carbon footprint. Thinking about when can you potentially you know, walk or ride a bike or 
uh, other uh, means of, of, of lowering your uh, carbon footprint from transportation. Now, not everybody has the, the luxury of, of uh, uh, either making those investments or uh, making those changes, but there are little steps that all of us can make, and I think at the end of the day, we have to recognize that this is the quintessential and defining collective action of our time, and as a result, it really requires all of us to respond. Reed Miller says it's not all bad news. The good news is that the future is still in our hands, and we can really determine what the future will be for our kids and for our grandkids. But it's really going to depend on the decisions we make today, the investments we make today.